Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Tuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question one from the May 2012 PUA paper two. If you want to see the solutions to the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so as per usual, we'll take a read of the information. It says an accounting student prepared the following trial balance for heavy metal enterprises with the year ended 31st December 2011 and inserted the amount of 51200 for capital. Okay, so they've given us here an entire trial balance. Now, long story short, it's wrong. There are quite a few items inside of here that are in the wrong column. But rather than go through each item one by one and discuss it and then have to go back over again to do the trial balance, let's take a look at what the question is requiring us to do. So it says to prepare the corrected trial balance for heavy metal enterprise showing clearly the correct amount for capital. Okay, so let's start. So of course, please remember to head up whatever statement you are doing correctly. Name of the entity, in this case, Heavy Metal Enterprises. Name of the statement you are doing, in this case, a corrected trial balance, and the period to which it applies, as at 31st December 2011. All right, let's take a look at the first item across here. It says bank overdraft. Now, bank overdraft is a liability, and liabilities have credit balances, but we are seeing it put in the debit balance here. Sorry, the debit column. So we are going to put it in the credit column where it belongs. Next, we have what? Cash on hand. Now, cash is an asset. Assets have debit balances. So we're going to see that in the debit column across here. Next, we have the provision for bad debts and bad debts. Well, the provision for bad debts is a contra asset. Its function is to reduce the value of an asset, specifically debtors or accounts receivable, in the balance sheet. Debtors have debit balances. Assets have debit balances. So therefore, if the function of the provision is to reduce a debit balance, it has to have the opposite balance, which is a credit balance. Bad debts, however, is an expense, and expenses have debit balances. Okay, let's take a look at the next two items. We have accounts receivable or debtors and accounts payable or creditors. Now, we just said that accounts receivable or debtors is an asset, and assets have debit balances. Conversely, accounts payable, also known as creditors or trade creditors sometimes, is a liability and liabilities have credit balances. Okay, what do we have after that? I'm seeing long-term loan. Now, a loan, whether long-term or short-term, is a liability and as we saw in the case of accounts payable just now, liabilities have credit balances. Okay, what do we have next? I'm seeing two carriage items, carriage in and carriage out. Now, they are both expenses. Carriage in is when we pay for delivery of goods, sorry, of, yeah, goods, sometimes goods coming into us, and carriage out is where we pay for delivery of goods going to customers. Either way, they're both expenses, and expenses have debit balances. Okay, what are we seeing after that? So I'm seeing, oh, one second, eh? I'm seeing commission received and rent paid. So commission received, that's a revenue, that's money coming in. So that should actually be credited to the commission's account. Yes, it will be debited to cash book or cash account or bank account, but you have to credit where it's coming from. So the commission received as a revenue and revenues have credit balances. Rent paid is an expense and expenses, as we just said, in the case of the carriage items have debit balances. Okay, next we have equipment at cost and the accumulated depreciation for the equipment. The equipment is an asset and assets have debit balances. The accumulated depreciation, however, much like the provision for doubtful debts or bad debts above, is a contra asset. Its function is to reduce the balance of, in this case, the equipment in the balance sheet. Equipment is an asset. Assets have debit balances. To reduce a debit balance, you have to credit, or you have to have a credit balance item. Next, we have motor vehicle at cost and the depreciation on the motor vehicle. Now, these balances are reversed as we know motor vehicle is an asset and assets have debit balances. So we're gonna slot that in here and accumulated depreciation in motor vehicles. So we just talked about that with respect to the equipment. It's a contra asset and therefore has a credit balance. Next, I'm seeing a few items here. So we have salaries, inventory, and purchases. Salaries is an expense. Inventory is an asset. Purchases is an expense. And those items all have debit balances. Next, what are we seeing? I'm seeing a few items. Well, let's focus on two at a time. Sales. 125 miscellaneous expenses 36,400 sorry so sales is a revenue and as we mentioned above revenues have credit balances miscellaneous expenses is an expense and has a debit balance so that that one was in the correct column then we have returns out and returns in now returns out is subtracted from purchases 
So it's kind of like an anti-expense. Expenses have debit balances. So the anti-expense or contra-expense, if there's such a thing, will be recorded or shown as a debit balance. A credit balance, sorry, a credit balance, my bad. And returns inwards, well, that one is subtracted from sales. And it's like an anti-revenue or maybe contra-revenue. That's a, a phrase or a term. And revenues have credit balances. So therefore, this will have a debit balance. And the last item, so they have here capital, but of course this capital figure is just meant to make the trial balance balance. As you can see, it, it does agree, but as we've gone through, you've noticed quite a few things in your wrong column. So unless everything happened to net off, there's no way this 51,002 for capital can be the correct figure. So what we do is we add up all the items on the debit in debit column, we add up all the items in the credit column, and we subtract. And when we find a difference, that will simply be the capital figure. In this case, 61,400. And when you add up both columns going down, you're going to get the same total of 406,000. Okay, that's the end of part A. Let's take a look at part B. Okay, so it says you are presented with the following day books. Day books are also known as journals. So this sales book item is the sales journal, which records only credit sales of inventory. On the 1st of September, we have a credit sale to U Plumber of 7,200, 7, sorry. On the 4th, we have a credit sale to V. Henry of 41.50. On the 13th, to V. Henry again of 2100. And on the 20th of September, to U Plumber 13.96 for a total value of credit sales of 14,846. Okay, let's take a look at the next book, which is the Returns Inwards Day book. That's the Returns Inwards Journal. We have two, two sets of returns inwards. We have one from U Plumber on the 3rd for $1,000. And one on the 9th of September from V. Henry for 1950, totaling 2950. And the last thing I'm seeing here, let's we have to show quite a bit of stuff here. This is the cash book, right? So we have, of course, the debit side, which shows the receipts or money coming in, as well as the discount allowed column. And then we also have the credit side, which shows payments or money going out, and the discount received column. Now we don't have too many things inside of here, to be honest. So let's take a look and see what exactly they want us to do. So it's the first item says to post the information from the day books in the personal account of U Plumber and balance the account with three marks. All right, so we'll take a look at U Plumber's account. Now we didn't have any opening balances, but clearly we're making sales to U Plumber on credit. So U Plumber is a debtor and debtors are assets and assets. What are your double entry rules again? Debit to increase, credit to decrease. So U Plumber has two sets of credit sales, one on the 1st of September and one on the 20th of September. So we're going to just put those of the, both of those items sorry, in on the debit side. Sale on the 1st of September, 7200 On the 20th, we have sales for $1,396. Right? So of course, these items go on the debit side because they are increasing the amount that U Plumber owes to us, hence increasing the asset and thus requiring debit entries in the asset account. We also have, I think, one return from U Plumber, which is for 1,000 on the 3rd of September. Now, if, if U Plumber returns goods to us, they no longer have to pay for those goods, which means the amount they owe is going to come down or decrease. And to record a decrease in an asset, we have to record that on the credit side of the asset account. And there's also one more item, which is found in the cash book on the debit side, right around here. So we're seeing U Plumber on the 4th of September, Right, we're receiving 5100 from U Plumber, and under the discount column, we're seeing $100. So that's a discount allowed to U Plumber and a check received from U Plumber. So if it's on the debit side in the cash book, guess what side it has to be on in U Plumber's account? Correct, on the credit side. Why? Because when U Plumber pays us back, they are reducing the amount of money they owe us. It's like if I owed you $10 and I paid you back nine, I now owe you $1, so I've reduced the amount of money I owe to you. So we're gonna put the bank item on the credit side as well as the discounts allowed. And now to find the balance carried down, we'd simply add up the items on the debit side, add up the items on the credit side, and then subtract to find the difference. So I'm seeing 2,396, and of course, when we total up both sides, we'll get the same balance of, sorry, the same total of 8,596, and the balance, of course, is carried down from the credit side, and then subsequently brought down on the debit side. Okay, now let's take a look at the next item they want us to prepare. Okay, so they are saying to prepare the debtor's control account and any other account in the general ledger for the month of September. Okay, so the debtor's control account is also sometimes known as the sales ledger control account or the debtor's summary account. It's a single account that summarizes all of the transactions we have with debtors. 
So, of course, it follows your double entry rules for assets because a debtor is an asset, which means you're going to debit to increase and credit to decrease. Okay, so what we're going to put in first is the total credit sales figure of 14846 and that's going to go on the debit side of the debtor's control account. The next item we could put in is the total returns in, which is 2950 and of course, that's going to go on the credit side. Now, from there, we could go on the debit side of the cash book and we could add up all of the money that our debtors pay to us. So I'm seeing a total of 11,140. And don't forget, we also had discount figures. <laughs> okay, now we simply have to balance the account, which again is a relatively simple procedure. You find the total value of all of the items on the debit side. You find the total value of all of the items on the credit side and you simply subtract. That'll give us a balance carry down of $596. If we add both columns going down now, we'll get the same total on both sides and the balance carried down from the credit side is brought down on the debit side. And as you know, assets usually have debit balances. All right, now they said to do any other account found in the general ledger. Now the general ledger has the accounts of your revenues, your expenses, your assets, your liabilities, capital, your provisions, all that stuff. What it does not have are the personal accounts for your debtors, which will be found in your sales ledger and the personal accounts for your creditors, which will be found in your purchases ledger. So we have only two other items. If we look in the cash book on the credit side, we are going to see payments in respect of rent and in respect of wages. So I did both accounts just in case you guys did one or the other. So for the rent account, there's a cash figure of 700. Of course, this is recorded on the credit side in the cash book because it's a payment. Payments reduce the amount of cash we have. Cash is an asset. To record a reduction in an asset, you have to credit the asset account. So if you pull up the rent account, we're going to see a simple item on the debit side here saying 700. There's no other item to go in the account, so the balance carried down is 700. You can put totals on both sides, and of course, the balance will be brought down on the debit side. Right? If instead you did the wages account, on the 25th of September, we have a payment by check. How do we know by check? Because it's under the bank column. So a payment of 2,500 by check in respect of wages. So of course, if it's on the credit side of the cash book, it's going to be on the debit side of the wages account. So we're going to put the debit item there. And we saw that there were no other transactions in respect of wages. So we're simply going to balance off the account with 2,500, total up both sides and bring the balance down on the debit side. All right, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question one from the May 2012 PO paper two. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you when I have time. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and please remember to check out my website where you'll find some pretty useful POA handouts. Anyway, guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.